We are in Eden, North Carolina. This is where the pollution started. What does it say? Uh, it's, uh, it's, the paper is titled The Dan River Incident. And uh, it's this warning that you should have no contact with the water or the wildlife in the water because of the uh, coal ash spill. Well, can you read that? Mm, you want me to read it? Read it. Where, where is it from and who is to? And February 12, 2014 from the Department of Health and Human Services. It says the... Uh, because of the Duke Power Eden coal ash spill is located in North Carolina's portion of the Dan River, a potential hazard exists immediately downstream of the release. And I'm not sure where that is. Therefore, the North Carolina Department of Public Health is recommending that people avoid recreational contact with water and sediment in the Dan River in North Carolina, downstream of the Duke Power Eden spill site. We, we also recommend that people do not contact submerged or floating coal ash or ash washed up on the river bank. <clears throat> Direct contact with water or sediment may cause skin irritation. Wash your skin that has been exposed to the water or sediment with soap and water. The department will continue to monitor data as it becomes available to identify when health risks are not a concern. Uh, they, this goes on to say they are collecting fish downstream of the spill to evaluate uh, the damage, if any, to fish and to not consume any fish from the river until they determine whether it is uh, safe to eat them or not. What's the date on that letter, John? The date is uh, February 12, 2014 from the Governor Pat McCrory. He's the former mayor of Charlotte. And as long as I got the camera on, let me just thank Duke Power for destroying the river. Uh, Pat McCrory used to work for Duke Power. Yep. So uh, I hope the profits that were made from containing that ash in there for several years was worth the life of every fish. Do we know about how much was released? <clears throat> I don't have that newspaper in front of me, but I'm... Several, several thousand, thousand tons. tons. Early in the Feb month of February. And here is the... Uh, the river. Lock that up, get that key, John. I'll pull it down here. This is the Leakville Landing Bridge. And it's the Dan River. Vital supply line. Narrate this one for us. It tells upstream or downstream of the I don't know. The river's flowing to the left. But well, this gives the history of the Dan River. That'll be good to know. Yeah, give that narration. I think that's a French boat right there. Uh, oh, I hate these cars coming around here. Roanoke Navigation Company opened the Upper Dan River here for Thinking that word is a bateau. It's a certain kind of boat, probably French in origin. In the 1820s, in the towns of Leakesville, which is 
actually present day Eden. Uh, let's see, the towns of Leakesville and Madison became river ports. During the antebellum era, farmers shipped their produce downstream to markets in North Carolina and Virginia. On the return trip, the bateau carried goods bound for the town merchants. When Richmond and Danville Railroad reached Danville, Virginia, which is another interesting town, in 1856, bateau traffic decreased below that point. So the railroads came in, the boat traffic was drying up. After the Civil War began in 1861, bateau owners continued to ship goods up and down the river. In Danville, Confederate authorities soon established hospitals, prisons for captured Union soldiers, and a large quartermaster commissary. Early in 1863, the Confederates commandeered Dan River Bateau to transport iron and large quantities of grain and other foodstuffs from Madison and Leakesville to the Danville Commissary. From there, the railroad transported supplies to the Confederate forces in Virginia. In the summer of 1863, the Danville firm of Jones, Neal, and Farrer contracted with the quartermaster in Danville to furnish coal to heat prisons and hospitals. Because coal was in short supply in the south, the company reopened the Wade Coal Mines two miles west of Leakesville. In 1863 and 64, Union prisoners from Danville, the Union prisoners from Danville dug a large quantity of coal there. It was loaded on the bateau boats and shipped downstream to Danville. Leakesville Landing, one of these boat docks, which is right here in front of us, was located a short distance up here. So there's a tremendous amount of history on the banks of this river. And that's actually a bateau boat. Yeah. And that's what photographed, and it said on the New River in West Virginia in 1872, which we were up there uh, several weeks, well, back in December. Yep. So this is uh, a lot of, uh, was that a person right there? Yeah, yeah, leaning on a sack or something. Yeah. There's the kids, it's probably slaves. That's somewhere up. West Virginia, maybe around Hinton. But, uh, anyway. And this is where we are, and we want to go here when we get through. There are the coal mines. But Where's that coal mine? It's on the river south of us. Yeah. If this is oriented to north. I'd like to see those coal mines. If yeah. Still, uh, we can find them. Stop and ask somebody. I imagine most of that coal sludge is on the bottom now. now I, I read where it was like four and five feet deep. Kill every damn thing. It's a nice little park. And that is the dam. And there's a little stream coming in over there. Some kind of mill up there on the hill.
Well, we don't know if we upstream or downstream, but that sign's posted, that letter. So it must be, you know, it must be downstream. Matter of fact, John, you can see some of that black stuff right here. On the bank. Do you think that's cold wire? It looks like it. What well, it looks like to me. I'm curious as to where that water is coming in from across. Do you think that's just run off off the bridge? I doubt it. That looks too like it's too much volume for that. Yeah, it is. It almost looks like how this bank is across that there might be water on the other side of that. We'll see when we cross the bridge, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nature, it'll take nature a hundred years or more to clear the crap out. Mankind killing the rivers, killing nature. Look at the bobbers in that tree. I see that. You can't eat no fish now. There's a sack hanging up there in that tree with something in it. Yeah. I want to know what it is. That's coal ash. That's what that black stuff is. This is a flood plain. Yeah. It floods periodically. What's the name of that meal up there? I can't remember now. Can of tan. We are in Eden, North Carolina. This is where the pollution started. What does it say? Uh, it's, uh, it's, the paper is titled The Dan River Incident. And uh, it's this warning that you should have no contact with the water or the wildlife in the water because of the bill site. We, we also recommend that people do not contact submerged or floating coal ash or ash washed up on the river bank. <clears throat> Direct contact with water or sediment may cause skin irritation. Wash your skin that has been exposed to the water or sediment with soap and water. The department will continue the Dan River. A potential hazard exists immediately downstream of the release. I'm not sure where that is. Therefore, the North Carolina Department of Public Health is recommending that people avoid recreational contact with water and sediment in the Dan River in North Carolina, downstream of the Duke Power, even the uh, coal ash spill. Well, can you read that? You want me to read it? Read it. Where, where is it from and who is to? And February 12, 2014 from the Department of Health and Human Services. It says the uh, because of the Duke Power Eden coal ash spill is located in North Carolina's portion of the monitor data as it becomes available to identify when health risks are not a concern. Uh, they, this goes on to say they are collecting fish downstream of the spill to evaluate uh, the damage, if any, to fish and to not consume any fish from the river until they determine